on guys welcome back to the channel thanks so much for tuning in today i'm going over why i'm not buying this new effect by mark lemon called ptsd or portal to single destination and um, it's important that i just point out to you guys a couple of really important things I'm going over this today because somebody left a comment on one of my reviews asking me my thoughts about this and the trailer just came out like a day ago. I watched it and I immediately just thought like, oh, this is the same effect I've seen over and over again. It felt like recycled magic. I'm definitely not buying that. But it's important that I put out this disclaimer that this is not a magic review. I don't own the product. Everything I tell you here in this video is my own opinion, my own speculation about the effect. I don't know what the gimmicks are. I think I do. I think I have a very good idea about it, but you may have other ideas. And if this looks like something that you like, that you wanna buy, go ahead and buy it. I'm not telling you not to buy it. I'm telling you why I'm not buying it. Maybe you like Mark Lemon and you wanna support the creator. Well, go ahead and buy it. It's just important because this channel is really designed to help the consumer of magic products. You know, most of these magic review channels here on YouTube, they work hand in hand with big magic companies. They're supplied stuff for free with the idea that they're gonna put out a review, which to me, it seems more like an advertisement of that product. And so, I started doing these videos of why I'm not buying a product and many people have sent me emails thanking me. A lot of them don't leave comments and I think it's because they don't want to be publicly ostracized, but instead they found that these videos are very helpful to them because a lot of what I tell them are things that maybe they didn't realize in the moment, you know, maybe they fell for the hype. And so this video is designed to try to give you a good idea of why I'm not buying the product. But if you like it, go buy it. I'm not telling you not to. That's really what it is. So anyway, we're gonna first take a look at the ad copy here on Illusionist. This is being sold for $45. You're gonna get some gimmicks, obviously, and the envelope that you need. And the effect is this, the effect is an envelope is placed down at the start. Then with no boring drawn out equivoc process, your spectator names a playing card and that is the one in the envelope. So obviously there is some process and later on down here in the ad copy, they mention all the gimmicks you need are included and the video instruction will teach you a genius one phase equivoc to be able to pull this off every time. So there obviously is Equivoke involved. Um, they also advertise that there's no wallets, there's no switches, no extra envelopes, no thin cards. So it's one envelope. And so for it to be that thin, I already think I have a very good idea of what the gimmicks must look like. So we're gonna take a look at the trailer really quickly and I'm gonna just point out what I saw in the trailer. I'm not gonna expose anything, obviously, but if you just pay attention to the things I tell you that I point out, then in your into magic, then it should seem very obvious to you what's you know what's going on here, okay? And then afterwards, I'm going to tell you a couple other thoughts of my own. So let's just take a look at the trailer real quick. The first thing you guys are going to notice is that there's no sound, and that's because there's some music in the background, and I didn't want to get a YouTube strike against me. Um, but it's not going to matter anyway, because I'm just really going to point out a few things to you guys. I'm going to be pausing the video along the way. So this first performance is actually just a revelation and you could see here how he's holding the card. It's important that you notice this because this is going to become a running theme with each performance that he's going to be holding the card the same way each time. And you're going to find that's going to be part of your thought process here. The other thing I noticed was that all of the revelations are court cards. And you're going to see here that he doesn't hand it out to her. He doesn't show her the rest of the card. He doesn't let her look at the envelope. So it's important you guys notice that as well. Um, and here, look at this. He's quickly getting the card far away from her. Um, 
for obvious reasons. Now, the second performance I found to be the most misleading, and the reason is because it really feels like you're watching a full performance, but I feel like they left out some of the procedure they must have, because he says to him here, you know, imagine that I hand you, you know, an invisible deck of cards, you're going to take the cards and go through it, and you're going to select any card you want, or at least it feels that way. So I feel like there's a part of the process that you didn't see before this. And I felt that that was like the most misleading thing. Now, the other thing to notice is notice the angle of the camera. You're going to notice that during the revelation that they shift. And I think that that's really important to take note of that because I think that's really important because that really does kind of make me think that I have a good idea of what the gimmicks are because of that. Now, this spectator is really overreacting. I don't know. Is he a real spectator? Who knows? Notice he's holding the card in the exact same way again. Keep that in mind because it leads me to believe that I have a really good idea of what that gimmick is. And again, he's not showing him the rest of the card. He's not letting him hold it or the envelope, you know. With my own spectators, that would be difficult because they'd want to, you know, at least see a little bit more of the card. But as you can see here, he's talking about how thin this envelope is, which, again, it just kind of confirms to me what my own thought process is of what must be going on. And then this last performance, it really is just the revelation. And it's really important you guys notice this angle where the camera is, and that's because... I perform with people at this angle all the time, but I don't think you can actually have people all around you when you perform this because notice here the revelation that he does. You're going to notice that the camera immediately moves to this angle. And I think that that's because you cannot have somebody behind you or next to you. Otherwise, they're going to see more than they should. Again, notice he's holding the card again in the same way. So I think that's really what I wanted to go over and point out to you guys. Let's get back to the rest. All right, so you guys took a look at the trailer and you can see where my thought process is going. This effect, the actual plot of it is as old as the hills and there's been many versions of this. The most recent version that I can remember is the one that was put out by Sans Minds Magic, like maybe like nine years ago they put out an effect called Prospect. And that effect, uh, the magician actually shows a spectator the back of a card, puts it in his pocket or her pocket, and has a spectator come up with a card, and then they take it out of the pocket and show them that that's the card that they just thought of. And I think that that's an excellent version that exists out there, and it feels exactly like this, um, which is why I have think that I have a very good idea of what the gimmicks are that you're going to get with this. Now, what I would argue is that if you have the shadow wallet, then virtually you have the same types of gimmicks for the most part, um, and you can perform the same type of effect, and it's very thin and easy to carry, and you have the extra advantage that you've got a peak wallet, you can carry other effects in here. So if you don't have the shadow wallet, um, and you are thinking about possibly picking this up. You may want to just pick this up instead because for $20 more, you can get the wallet where you're going to have a peak wallet and you're going to have this extra advantage. Like for me, where I like to perform with people closer to me, where you're able to take out the card. Like let's say that they name like the queen of, of spades. I can actually look at it for a second before I reveal it to the spectators, right? because you can flash the back of it, you know, because it looks like a regular card. Um, so I like this version better myself just because I feel that it just is more on the up and up, right? But again, there's been other versions of this that have been put out and people have mentioned on the Magic Cafe, Mark, Eldon, Mark Elsden's On The Mark, and of course, you know, Joshua J's Inferno, which I also have that as well. Um, but I think I would actually prefer this version just because I can carry other stuff with it and I can do other routines with this wallet. But if you are interested in like a thought of card to wallet and you want to do one that has less restrictions, then you may want to check out my top five review of thought of card and wallet. 
because I went over several products where the spectator can literally think of any card that they want. So just to sum up why I'm definitely not buying PTSD by Mark Lemon, it really feels like the same exact effect that we've been accustomed to and that probably you've performed, I've performed, that you have the gimmicks at home. I feel like Mark Lemon hasn't really elevated this to something better. Like, I don't see any improvements. If anything, it feels more restricted. I mean, he introduced an envelope, which might actually make it more difficult to perform. The Sans Mind version, where the cards are just loose in your pocket, it's, it's gotta be easier than this, where you're using an envelope. And for those of you that have the Shadow Wallet, you know that it's built, it's all built into the wallet, so there's no fumbling to get the card you need to. And there's definitely a process, a procedure involved here, even if they didn't show it to you in the trailer, because the ad copy says that there's an Equivoke involved. In fact, they said there's like a one-step genius Equivoke involved. So looking at the ad copy, you know, looking at the trailer, watching what's being revealed, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought process to try to figure out what that must be. You know, I think I already know it. You know, I think I already know what it is. So really, what are you paying $45 for? You know, you're just gonna complicate your life more. That's at least my thought process. Now, you might think differently. You might wanna support the, the magician. You might wanna support the creator. That's up to you. But in my own mind, I even question why are they releasing stuff like this, which is basically a very small variation on what already exists. It hasn't elevated the original plot in any real way. So I ask these questions to myself all the time. Anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys. As usual, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment below. If you don't feel comfortable leaving a comment below, you can just send me an email. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it shows me that you're interested in this. Give me a thumbs up if you like this content, if you like this video, I will make more videos like this that will help you in your buying decisions of magic products. Anyway, thanks so much guys, and I'll see you on the next video.